going to go to Acts chapter 1. This week is a prelude to a new series we're going into called What's Next. How many feel like that? Like after this whole pandemic, you're kind of feeling, well, what's next? What's next, Lord? <clears throat> we're going to deal with that this week. Pray for me. I have a weak voice. I'm not really sure why, but today is a beautiful day to be in the house of the Lord. Amen, somebody? And we're going to be walking through the book of Acts in this series called What's Next. And we're just going to go chapter by chapter and just see all of what God has done in his church. And if he did it in the first church, he should do it in this one. Amen. Amen. You're going to see doctrine reiterated. You're going to see miracles, signs, and wonders in the Word of God. And if he did it then, he should do it now. And so we're going to ask the Lord to perform miracles, signs, and wonders as we go through this series and to set our hearts ablaze for what he has done with his church, through his church, and for his church. Amen. So I hope you can make it to that. We start that next week. But this is the prelude because it's Pentecost Sunday. Somebody say amen. This is when the church was born. So we're excited about that. Acts chapter 1, in verse 1 through 9, I'll read from the screen. The former treatise have I made, O Theophilus, that's the name that's available for babies for 2020. Theophilus, could be Theophilus face, could be Theophilus car, whatever, you know, it applies. Someone said Amen. All right, dad joke is done. Number one, dad joke done. We're on our way. Good morning to all of you that are online. God bless you. Good to see you. All of, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach. So this former treatise that I made with the old office of all that I began to do and teach until the day in which he was taken up. After that, he through the Holy Ghost was given com commandment unto the apostles whom he had chosen next verse, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion. Everyone say passion. Amen. We're starting with our heart today, after his passion. By many infallible proofs, being seen of them 40 days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Next verse. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which he saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. And someone said amen to that. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? And he said unto them, I cannot read that. It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father has said, has put in his own power. Amen. But ye shall, read it with me, receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in all Samaria, the uttermost parts of the earth. Let's stop there. Amen. Lord, we ask you to touch your word and endue with power your word that already has power. Minister to us through it, Lord Jesus, and continue to use your word to anoint us, to give us faith, to give us strength, and to give us everything we need today. In Jesus' name, as we walk through the book of Acts, let us be reminded of how powerful your church is. And everybody said, in Jesus' name, you may be seated. In Acts 1, in verse, it's either an 8 or a 3, but I can't read it. <laughs> I'm having some troubles with my eyes. I apologize. Acts 1, verse 3, we have a scripture that says that Jesus showed his self alive after his passion. His passion was the church, amen. And he put in the church what it needed before it began. He ministered throughout the earth. He had disciples that walked with him and saw him do many miracles because he was able in Scripture, we understand, to do miracles, signs and wonders as Jesus on the earth. In fact, Scripture tells us that he was able to forgive sins. Are you glad he could forgive your sins? I'm glad about that, amen. He released me from that debt 
that I owed and that pain and that shame, he released me from it. And because he did it on the earth, he was able to do it still to this day. So what he did was he brought a understanding to his disciples <coughs> that they were able to release a power in the earth that was from heaven that no one could forgive sins but Jesus Christ we understand that so when he died on the cross he he brought to this earth something that stayed here and that was that no matter who you are and where you come from if you will just bow your knee and humble your spirit to God he will hear your prayer and he will forgive your sins amen the saying is that the devil thought he had me defeated when I hung my head as I was on my knees. But what he didn't realize was I was actually praying before I stood to conquer through the power of his name. Amen. So we know that the power of God is in this earth because he came, walked it, lived it, demonstrated it, and then he died. And when he died, he said, it is finished. Jesus had to stop talking in order to die because he is the eternal word in flesh. And if he kept speaking, he could not die because out of his mouth came spirit and life. Amen. So that's why when he went to the cross, he didn't say a mumbling word because in order for him to die in his flesh, he had to stop talking because everything he said brought life. Somebody say amen. From the time he created the earth to the time he walked the earth as the word of God, he was always speaking life and he's still speaking life to this day, brothers and sisters. He's He's still speaking life over his church. He's still speaking life over your dreams, over your heart, over your life, over your family. He's speaking life. And so when he said it, he said it is finished. It was because when his word goes out, it accomplishes what it needs to do. And so he said it is finished before he died. But even though his death was coming on that cross, we know that he had to speak it first because Jesus fulfilled the word of God on the earth, amen? And if he was going to die in his body for our sins, he was going to have to say it before he did it because that's how God works. It's in his word. If you apply his word to your life, it's done when you apply it, when you put your faith in it. It is done in that moment, and you have to understand that God will invigorate, and he will empower power his church, but he does it through the word being spoke and spoken. And so you have no under you have no understanding of what God wants to do when you don't get into the word of God. Then you begin to apply it to your life and you have no true power if you don't have a word spoken first out of you that demonstrates that the Holy Ghost is in you. Do you understand? Any work of God is always following the word of God. Amen, somebody. So when you see the, the, the individuals walking with Jesus, I think they're called disciples, walking on the road to Emmaus, amen, and Jesus is speaking to them. What does he do? He gives word first. And then what do they say? Didn't our hearts burn within us? Didn't our hearts burn inside of us when we heard the words of life, amen? So we understand that this isn't just another Sunday morning to come and celebrate a birthday of a church in an upper room, but this is a Sunday morning to come and celebrate the church who still has a heart that's burning with the power of the Holy Ghost. Every time you speak in tongues, you are burning the flame that was lit in the in the New Testament church. Amen, somebody. So when you come to the Lord, you often will come with your heart first. You will either fall in love with what Jesus is or you will fall in love with the fact that he can save you. But understand that your maturity has to go beyond a God who is your escape. Amen, somebody? If he is only your escape, he is no better than any other drug, any other bottle. But understand that you cannot get this kind of escape from a drug or a bottle. Don't misunderstand me. I'm saying that he is your rescue. He is your restoration. He is your true escape. He is the anesthetism for this world's troubles and problems and sin and pain. But not only is he that, that is the beginning. Maybe that's what causes you to 
to fall in love with Jesus. Maybe that's what causes you when you see his sacrifices and the narrow pierced hands in scripture and the side that was pierced. Maybe you fall in love, but when you go beyond that, you go into a head knowledge of Jesus Christ, you begin to understand that you can speak a word and ignite a fire in another heart. You can speak a word and set a flame in this earth. You can speak a word and turn a world upside down that's living under depression and pain and hurt and struggle and the rain just never seems to stop. I'm glad and I'm preaching today. Forgive me for yelling, but I, I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. I'm glad that I know a church that knows how to build a fire in the rain. I'm glad I'm in a church that still has an active living word. I'm glad I'm in a church that has the power of God unleashed inside of it. And we are the vessel of a burning heart of God Almighty. Amen, somebody. That it demonstrated itself on their head, set like cloven tongues, like as a fire cloven means, separated out onto each one of them. It was an external sign, yes, and it doesn't happen every time someone gets filled with the Holy Ghost. And there was a sound of heaven as a rushing mighty wind that filled all the house in Jerusalem. Jesus told them to go there and wait, to go there and wait for the promise of the Father. We know it's in Acts. If you read down in this first part of the scripture, you can see it. He's told, he told them to go and wait for this promise. Wait till I put something in the vessel before you go out and try to pour out of your vessel. Wait till I get something in you that you can share with the world. And so we understand that in Scripture that they went and they waited for the promise of the Father and the wind. The sound of a rushing mighty wind came from heaven, filled all the house where they were sitting. Thank God it filled all the house. Amen. We ought to come into church and expect all the house to be filled. Amen. All the house to be filled. Every one of us should leave here feeling more excited, more encouraged, ready to live for God with all our heart and have a burning desire inside of us and a passion like Jesus did. Amen. And that was an external external sign, the wind. So the wind may not sound today, and the fire cloven tongues may not appear on the top of heads, but I guarantee you, if you surrender your heart to God, he'll fill you with the Holy Ghost, and that internal sign is still available today. It is the power of the Holy Ghost in speaking in other tongues. It is the evidence that you have received the power of the Holy Ghost in your life. Somebody online, just put some fire in the chat right now. Amen. That God is actually still pouring out the Holy Ghost and fire, amen, the Holy Ghost and his fire, but we know that when God pours out the Spirit, that you will speak in another language because the Word has to go before the filling, amen, you have to understand that it may happen simultaneously in Scripture, we understand that it is the symbol that you have been filled, but there is always a Word with God's work, amen, so we know that when we get filled with the Holy Ghost, the original sign is speaking in tongues because God uses something of his word. Somehow he will utter himself to let you know that you are filled with his spirit. It is the word of God. It is the pattern in scripture. And so we know that Jesus is in our lives because we have spoken in that heavenly language. Amen, somebody. And the power of God rests within us. And I'm thankful because he put himself inside me. He put his love in, in my heart. And I know that I could not do what I do without him being all in. And thank God he did come to that cross. Thank God he did die. Thank God 50 days ago we celebrated Easter. Because had it not been for him coming, had it not been for his passion, as I just read to you and referenced in Scripture, and had you say it through your own lips, had it not been for his passion that he died for us, we would not have had a burning heart for full of the Holy Ghost. Amen. We would not have Pentecost without the cross. Understand that, that there had to be someone who came who gave every bit of their self to it, gave all of himself to it. He gave everything he had down to the last drop of blood because he wanted us to not live without him. To not live with stories of when he was here, but to live with him inside of our heart. Amen. And so no tabernacle is good enough. No cathedral is beautiful enough. No hands created, crafted, or, or otherwise is, is good enough for our maker because he didn't have plans to be in a crystal cathedral. He had plans to be in the heart of somebody who lived under a bridge and bring them out of it. He had plans to put a burning desire in somebody that I may be here, but I'm going there 
fire because I got filled with the Holy Ghost. You can't get away from the fire, brothers and sisters. You can't get away from the Holy Ghost when it fills you. It'll sneak into a boardroom in a meeting. It'll find you in a penthouse in the top of a millionaire's mansion. It'll find you someplace where you thought it could never find you. If I send to the heavens, he's there. If I descend into the hell, he's there. From east to west, he's there. And it's because he's my God who never leaves us and never forsakes us. The greatest tragedy is never having thrown yourself full force at anything in life. I, I'm a funeral director and I deal with people who pass away all the time. And the one thing that's common among all eulogies is whether they were passionate about something. Whether they had a heart on fire for something. Did they do something with everything in them? Because it doesn't matter how far they got or how great they were at it. As long as you threw yourself at something. As long as you gave all of yourself for something. Even if you only made it a little way, you say, well, I shot my shot. I did my best. I, I tried. At least I, have, I don't have the regret of never having tried. At least I did something with what I felt God calling me to do. And I was staying yesterday. Yesterday we were at the Whitman funeral, and we were at Abundant Life, a former church, and it was so nice there. It was good to go back home, and it was a sight for sore eyes. I saw Pastor Kylie and Pastor Michael Kylie, and, and, and I just, I was overwhelmed with the memories of being there over and over again and pastoring and speaking in the pulpit and all of those different things, and I was overwhelmed, but I remember not being able to sleep at night. And there being a burning heart inside of me that says, Brookfield doesn't have a church. And I began to search out who posted and who put in time in Brookfield, who, who, who dropped a pin on the map many years ago trying to start Bible studies here. And I, I see many different people that had come into the city and, and maybe tried to start a Bible study, but they weren't necessarily mentioned. But I, I remember that there is one man that came here and had a whole section of, of people that were meeting and they were having Bible study. And um, I can't remember his name right now, but his son preaches in Texas, Brother Cisco, and Jason Cisco is a friend of mine. I don't know why I couldn't remember that right now, but uh, Jason Cisco is a friend of mine. He pastors in Texas, but his dad actually had a Bible study in Brookfield, and so I got on my knees, and I began to pray, and I said, Lord, I will never go to the pulpit without a heart on fire. I'll never do anything unless you put a word in front of me to do it, and that's how I get my messages, and I go and pray until God anoints me, and God puts a fire in my heart from a word. I take the word, and he ignites it. He ignites it, and then I bring it to this pulpit pit and that's exactly what was going on was there was a man of God willing to teach a word of God in this city before we ever got here and that unleashed a fire that couldn't be let go of and my wife and I would drive into the city and we didn't know what we were feeling we were feeling uncomfortable we were I wasn't sleeping at night we were wondering what in the world can we do we didn't have the funds to do it we didn't have the ability to do it but we said Lord if you will if you will and we started getting words from the Lord we started getting tongues and interpretation saying you need need to go and we didn't have what we needed but I'll tell you one thing God will bless you if you go in a deficit if you go with the word of God if you have a word of God and you are under authority of your pastor and my pastor said if you want to go we'll launch you out and make a daughter work out of it and I said I don't know if I can do anything other than that I am not sleeping at night I've got to go doesn't matter if I'm the best preacher or if we have the best musicians or if we have the best facilities I don't care what we have as long as the word of God is going forth because when the word of God gets out to those people that are listening it ignites a fire in you amen somebody you shall receive power after that the holy ghost but you preached you taught you did whatever you did this morning all of it all together in spirit life class you did so good sarah i appreciate all of the teaching that you did if you missed it online go back and catch it our spirit life class it was amazing but i want you to know that she hit it well when she said you shall receive power after that the holy ghost has come upon you the word is dunamis in the original language is from which we get the word dynamite and we understand that dynamite is deadly, amen? But it's only deadly if you have a fuse. You have to light it. You have to ignite that dunamis, amen? So what we understand is the word of God is the fuse.
And the power of the Holy Ghost is the dynamite in us. And when we come into the presence of God, his word not only cleanses us, but it clears us out. <laughs> it moves everything out of the way. Amen. The word ignites the fuse and something goes off inside your heart and explodes and you see a new clarity. You see a new understanding. You see a way out that you maybe didn't see anymore. He's not just the way and escape anymore. He's the truth then. Now he's not only your, your, your ability to get out and your escape every single week, but now he's the truth that you go after. And so if the burning inside our lives is ignited by the word of God that's preached by the preacher and the, the rhema goes forward and you have the dynamite so it rolls right up to your life, it hits you, you ignite in the power of the Holy Ghost and then you go from having that power to take sin and darkness out of your life Life, to having a desire in your head to know more truth. So you go from a way to truth. Amen. And now you're studying the word. Now you're after God. Now you have a heart that's been after God and it's moved to your head. And you begin to mature in the word of God. And no longer are you drinking baby's milk. No longer are you needing a diaper change. But you are now laying hands on yourself and praying the prayer of faith. You are now coming online and watching for yourself and saying, I can have a power and a move of God in my living room if I have to. I can have it in this car if I have to. I don't know where you are, but I want to have the power of God in my heart and my mind. I want to be renewed daily. It's the answer of a good conscience toward God. So not only do I need faith, but then I need a good conscience. And a good conscience gives you authority and a power you can square back your chest and say ignore the roar of the enemy you have greater in you than that of the enemy greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world the roar is only to paralyze you it is a fear that paralyzes the church and you are supposed to ignore the roar he's a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour that means permission don't give him permission to devour your life. Don't give him permission to devour your children. Don't give him permission to devour your connection with God. I will get my blessing if I have to do it in a prayer closet. If I have to go in the bathroom, shut the door and lock it and the dog's at the door and the kids are at the door. I don't care. I will get my connection to heaven because it's the word of God that ignites everything in our life. And we need Pentecost every single day. Amen, somebody. We need Pentecost every day in our life. We forget the beauty of having a heart for God. We got hearts on the windows. We got hearts on all kinds of windows. We got hearts up here. And you got to start with your heart, but you can't stay with your heart. Because if all you do is live your life run by your heart, your heart is deceitfully wicked. No man can know it. And you might get off because of an emotion or a feeling. You might, you might just merge off of truth entirely and get out there so spiritually whacked out that you don't even know what is right. You could be, you don't even know if fat meat's greasy. Amen? <laughs> okay, that's, yeah. <laughs> that's funny, but we have to understand in a very real way that we appreciate all those who have stood in the front lines of this COVID-19 battle. And that while they're putting hearts on every window for our heroes, I wonder, do you have a heart for God? Do you have a heart for God today? You've got to start there. He's looking for a vessel. The greatest miracle was the outpouring of the Holy Ghost in Acts chapter 1. Amen. And when the power of God came into those vessels, they were ready to go into the world. It was a power given to light you up so you can light up the world. Amen. It wasn't something you're supposed to just live on once and then live out your life because you had that experience. You're supposed to live on it every day. It was made, it was made and, 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 and put into our life so that we could be witnesses, so that we could carry the gospel of Jesus Christ to the world. And I'm finding so many places where had Jesus not done it first, had he not come and showed the way, we wouldn't know the example. Amen. And I want to be a church that's on fire. I want to be a church. We are the church, amen? 
I'm not talking just us collectively. I want to be a church on fire. We are the church. And if I do my part, I don't have to worry about your part. If we got to be six feet apart, I don't care. I'm going to light up my circle. You light up your circle, amen? <laughs> you do what you can do with what you've got, and we're all going to start with our heart as we restart this new year, or this new time period with new things and new normals and whatever they want to call it. But I have a heart for God. Anybody else have a heart for God? He first gave himself for us by showing it was his passion that he gave himself. We should give ourselves in passionate surrender to Jesus Christ. Shows the timeline in scripture that he was with them for 40 days. And he sent them to Jerusalem. Amen. Someone say Jerusalem. The last part of that word is Salem, which means peace. Whenever you're waiting on Jesus to do anything, find a place of peace. Amen. If there's something that's not peaceful in your life, find a way to cut it off. Amen. Find a way to get away from that. Find your place of peace and wait for Jesus to come. Wait in a place of peace. And someone said amen. There's power that's going to come on the church on a regular basis. There's power that's going to be passionate in people that want to live for God. And they, they have to understand that sometimes God's waiting on you to wait on him. Sometimes God just wants you to, to sit down and wait. The word power is used 272 times in Scripture. But the way that I've referenced it today, there's no power like the Holy Ghost power. There's no miracle like the miracle of being filled with the Holy Ghost. And that's why this is a miracle looking for a vessel, amen? Today, this is a miracle looking for a vessel. The Holy Ghost is still looking for vessels. So when you see someone in the marketplace, you need to tell them, come on to church with me. I don't care how empty you are. I don't care care how sad you feel. I don't care if you're depressed or upset. Come to where the spirit is still moving. There's still a sound of the rushing wind. Amen. Sound is energy. Energy is the Holy Ghost. Amen. Sound is spirit. Spirit is sound. It's very true. Have you ever been in a room and had someone play music and it changed the whole mood of the room? Someone said the way to decorate a house the cheapest is just change your music in the house. You don't have to move any furniture. You don't have to move anything. If we play some jazz right now, you guys would all be like, hey, all right. <laughs> she smiled. She's a music teacher. So she, if you started playing some gospel, some of you from the old church, you'd be like, hey. You'd get your dance on, right? All because of music. Everything changed because of music. When we were worshiping in here, did you feel yourself release from the worries of life, release from the cares of life, and go on in to worship into the throne room? What was that? That was spirit, and that was sound, amen? Everything that God does is spirit and sound. So when you find people that are empty and depressed, the chances are there's a whole lot of silence in their life. If you know people that have struggled with depression, tell them to turn on some worship music in their house. A silent place is where the enemy speaks, amen? But if you get with... If you get full of the Holy Ghost, you can be in silence and God can speak. But when you spend time in God's presence and you're not feeling a release from your flesh, go on into something like worship. Get some worship on. Get something going in your house. Get something moving because sound moves things, amen? They can literally think, oh, man, I don't know if I can preach all this and get through my notes. Are you following me in the camera? I'm sorry. I'm walking all around. I'm trying to stay up here for those online. If you, if you appreciate me staying in one place, just put a hand clap in the chat. Thank you very much. Don't lose heart. Don't lose heart. <laughs> Don't lose heart whenever you see people struggling. They just need a new heart put in them. Amen. So I'm talking about the Holy Ghost filling your life. And if you have the Holy Ghost, you have the power of God to take it to the world. And then we understand the disciples were given power in Scripture. When Jesus was still here in Luke 1 and 9, he gave the disciples power. And it's a beautiful story of how he starts them. He's like, I want you to experience the supernatural with me. I've been doing all these miracles in front of you. I've been doing all these things, but I'm going to put power in your heart. I'm going to put power in your life. And he does that in Luke 9 and 1. If you have that scripture, throw it up for me. In Luke 9 and 1, we see that he's talking about his disciples having power. And I, I don't know if there's... Another place in scripture where you see Jesus addressing their heart any more than in Luke chapter 9. For in verse 1, he deals with the fact that they're going to have power. Then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power. And everyone's saying power. Same word and authority over all devils and 
and to cure diseases. That's Luke chapter 9, verse 1. Now watch what they do, not having been filled with the Holy Ghost. Watch what they do with it. This is what human beings do with power. Go to verse 43 to 48. Jesus is now having to address what that power does in them. He's saying, and they were all amazed at the mighty power of God. And we say power. But while they were wondering every one of these things which Jesus did, he said unto his disciples, go to the next verse. Oh, man. Sorry, the graphic is really messing us up today. Someone read that for me. Let these sayings sink down. Thank you. Let these sayings sink down into your ears, for the Son of Man shall be delivered into the hands of men. Now, go to the next verse. He's telling them about the cross. He's saying, the true power is going to be after I'm delivered into the hands of men. That's when power is going to be unleashed on the earth. You are experiencing a start in your heart. You're experiencing a love for this and a power that's going to be unleashed on the entire earth. Amen? Not just in the disciples. Not just in the Jews as we talked last week. But when Jesus took his hands off the shoulders of the Jewish lineage and died, he opened up the blood for everybody. Anybody here last week? And remember the power of the blood? And so what he's saying is, but they understood not the saying, and it was hid from them, and they perceived it not, and they feared and asked him of that saying. They're like, what, what do you mean? They didn't understand that he was going to die. Go to the next verse. In verse, the next verse says, then there arose a reasoning among them, which of them should be greatest. Hit the brakes. We've got them tasting the power, but not having the power unleashed in the whole church until the day of Pentecost, which we celebrate today. But their first taste of it made them start talking about who's the greatest. I'm better than she is. I'm better than they are. I'm going to be the, gra I'm going to be the greatest. I'm going to be... Look what happens when you touch the power. You have to have God's authority and God's power in your life or else you will take everything he gives you and you'll use it for your own greatness. You'll use it for your own advancement. You use it for your own good. I have a friend that pastors a very large church, and he was up front, and he was just talking. He was taking his text, and he put it, pulled his watch out, and he goes, oh, my watch broke. Uh, we'll, I'll look at the time in the back. And he set his watch down like this, and he started preaching. And he began to preach, and he preached a great message, and, and everything happened. And then there was a little boy standing right here at the end of, of the service, and, and the boy was holding something in his hand. And he came down, and he's like, how are you doing? He's like, I'm, I'm good. My dad, Mark, wants to give you this. And he handed him a golden Rolex. He wanted to give the preacher a Rolex, and he said, I will never say something like that from the pulpit again because I never want what I'm doing to manipulate anybody to give something that they shouldn't be giving from their heart. Amen? So he said, I will never say from the pulpit that I need this or I want that or this is broken because he was using, he was using something that God gave him to suddenly get something greater given to him, and he never wanted to manipulate the Spirit of God like that. He never wants the church to be anything like that. So he was like, I want to just, I just want to have God use me the way he wants to use me and not use the power that he's given me for something great. He's not going to use it to get gain. Amen. The Bible calls it filthy lucre. You know those that are studying the word of God. So what he's saying here is he's saying they took what he let them sample and started making their own decisions on who would be the greatest. But then Jesus has to address it because he's going to pour out his spirit on the church. Amen somebody. And that spirit keeps you humble. That spirit will keep you whole that spirit will keep greed out of your life. That spirit will keep you from chasing filthy lucre. That spirit will keep you right with God. Amen, someone. Then there arose a reasoning among you. Go to the next verse if you would. And Jesus perceived the thought. Look, they are not even saying it yet. They're just, this is growing in them. And Jesus perceived the thought in their heart. Where's it at? This is the reason why I pulled this verse because it's in their heart. Amen. You got to start with your heart. It took a child and set him by him. Go to the next verse. He said, unless, go ahead, verse 48. And he sent them, and he said unto them, whosoever shall receive this child in my name receiveth me, and whosoever shall receive, receive me receiveth him that sent me. For he that is the least among you all, the same shall be great. He was saying, with the power of God in you, you have to make yourself of no reputation. And God will use that. 
you have to make yourself less so that he can be greater. Amen? How many know that if you make yourself less, God will use you more? How many know that if you humble yourself under the hand of God, he will do things for you. He will make ways for you. He will set you up. He will give you the promotion. Because if you get the promotion yourself, you have to keep that promotion yourself. But if God puts you up there, he keeps you up there. Amen. If God puts you up, he can take you down. Yes, but he puts you in place. And when he puts you in place, you have the resource of heaven behind that promotion. Amen. So you have to understand that when God promoted his church, he put the power of the Holy Ghost in them so that they could not only have power to do, but they could have power to be right. Amen? That they wouldn't get all caught up in the ways of the world of, I'm going to be greater than this one, or I'm going to be greater than that one, but what they actually had working inside them was a heart that would not quit for the things of God, and a heart that wouldn't let them be puffed up with pride, and a heart that wouldn't let them live their their life on, on autopilot, but they had to have something more. And so my wife and I, one day we came into the city and we had dinner here and we always would say, we look across the table and we say, is it time? And she goes, well, I don't, I don't think so. We did this for about two, three years. And then on the third year, she was like, I feel like it's time. And God just started opening doors. If it's God's timing, God will open the doors. Amen? Amen, somebody. If it's God's timing, someone put amen in the chat online. If it's God's timing, he will open the door. It's just like walking. You remember those old supermarket uh, doors where you would walk on the mat that they had out front? It's before they had the actual sensors, and you would step on the mat, and the door would open. Sometimes you have to take a step of faith before the door will open. So we took a step of faith. We believe God. And I believe that whenever you have a heart for God, he also gives you a heart for the church. And we started feeling that burning inside of us. And not only do you need to have a heart for the church to be on fire for God yourself, but you also need to have a heart for heaven. And I'm closing. You need to have a heart for heaven. You need to have a heart for eternal things. As we were burying this friend yesterday and we were doing the, <clears throat> we were doing the service my friend Russ Cordell, who's the pastor at Abundant Life, was saying how much he loved this man. And they had gone and fishing, and they had done things together. And he was saying, as a pastor, I'm having to minister to the family, but I also have need because I've lost my friend. Amen, somebody. We need to have a heart for heaven so much that we care about people. But when we are also hurting, we need to go to God and have him fill us up with the Holy Ghost so we can still continue to minister. So you're not just coming here every Sunday to get your needs met, but you're coming and bringing a vessel with you. You're coming and bringing somebody with you and saying, come, be filled with the Holy Ghost. I have a heart for heaven, and you're going to go somewhere. You're going to live for eternity somewhere, either heaven or hell. You're going somewhere. This earth is not our home. We're just a passing through. Amen. Our treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. My grandmother used to sing it and now I, I celebrate that she's with the Lord. But I thank God that she put in our family. I thank God my dad put in our family the passion of a burning heart for the things of God. And they planted three churches and we're planting church. It doesn't matter how many we end up planting but it matters whether or not we did something for the kingdom of God for all he's done for us do something for the Lord put your heart into it get all into it amen somebody and do your best to serve the Lord because life is but a vapor and we only live few days full of trouble Job said three score days and by reason of strength four score that's what we have on this life you break that down to time and minutes, all of the engineers in the room, and you start realizing we don't have much time. But God can multiply what we do with the power of his Holy Spirit in us. That we have the ability to do addition, but with the power of God in our life, we have the ability to do multiplication. Amen? So God, so God wants to do a great work in this day. Would you stand with me as we end our service and we begin. I don't know where your heart's been. I don't know what has been 
plaguing you throughout this pandemic. I don't know what you have dealt with in your life, but I want you to know that heaven is worth every effort. Living for God is worth every effort. There's nothing like it on planet Earth. There's nothing that sustains you like living with a Savior that can keep you. And having a spirit inside you that whenever you pray in the Holy Ghost, you pray the perfect will of God. And when you pray in the Holy Ghost and speak in tongues in your prayer, the enemy does not know what you're saying. You have a stealth mode, amen? You literally have the Holy Ghost inside of you. And when you begin to pray in that language, the enemy is confused. They get seasick. They start falling out because they can't figure out what you're saying. You can pray prayers through the Holy Ghost over your children. You don't even know you're praying. You can pray prayers through the Holy Ghost over your family and the church. You don't even understand the depth of those prayers. But the second you pray them, they agree with heaven because it's prayed through the Spirit. And the Spirit will give utterance to that. And when the Spirit says it, it has to happen. It has to happen. I remember the power of God knowing that he knows me so much. I walked over. My mom was playing the piano on this side, and I knelt down, and I remember the tear falling off my face as I gave my life to the Lord, wetting the the step in Palmer, Alaska. As I said, I'm not much, but what I have I give to you. Do you have a lot to give, or do you feel you have so little to give? Either one is perfect as long as you give it. As long as you give it. It's not about how much you have to give. It's about whether you give of yourself or not to the Lord. So today in this altar call, we're going to sing, I give myself away. And as we're giving ourselves away to the Lord, I want you to come to this altar. If you need social distancing, please respect everybody. If you feel like you want to pray for somebody, ask them before you pray for them. Get their permission before you touch them. But today, even in a pandemic when we're trying to socially distance, I feel like the Holy Ghost is here today. And you need to give yourself away somehow. Would you do that today? Would you sing with us as we sing together? And what we do in this next moment will determine whether God sets our hearts on fire. Would you make your vessel available here at this altar? Would you make your vessel? If you're uncomfortable, fine. Do it where you are. But make yourself available to God. Would you lift your hands in this place as we go into this altar time, as we ask the Lord to minister to us? Come on, give your heart away. Give your heart away today. Give your heart away today. Give your heart away today. Give your heart. Maybe you've been worried and you've been concerned with all of this world's cares. Just give your heart away today. Can you use me? I give myself away. Come on, do like I did as a young boy and just give yourself away. Don't worry about what the future holds. God will take care of it. Just give away yourself right now. I give myself away. Hallelujah. I give myself away. This is what he wants so us to do you with today. Start with your heart right now. Me. Just give it away. I give myself away. You have away. all of me, Jesus. Heart, mind, soul, and spirit. Oh, I give the very core of my being to you. give myself away. Doesn't matter so what yesterday looked like. Doesn't matter what to do, tomorrow me. looks like. I'm give still going to be standing away. right here giving myself away. Again and again, come on, put passion into it. Put your heart into it today. Lord, we need you. Lord, can use me. Take my heart. Take my heart, Lord. Would you put your hand on your chest right now? Just right over your heart. Just put one hand over your heart. Just give your heart away. Make this song your prayer right now. And hold my dreams. Come on, let that voice come out of you. If you're speaking in tongues in this room, let it come out. Come on, let a shout come out of you if you need to. If you need to conquer some things, pray in the Holy Ghost. I bind addiction in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I bind anything that's holding the heart of a man or a woman in this room. I release power of God to release them from that prison in the name of Jesus. Bring children home whose hearts have run from God. 
bring wayward hearts home today. I give myself away so you can use me.